I hope you are doing well. My name is Juliana, you're watching Tours to Local, a place where I share my travel tips, city guides, product reviews, stories from my adventures, and a lot more. But today we're talking about something different and something relevant to the world of travel and how I was able to afford a lot of my adventures. As you guys know, I did work on a cruise ship for two contracts, and in between those two contracts, I had a four month vacation and that was a little bit stressful because it was a time I wasn't making money, but also needed to make money. I couldn't just live without anything for four months. And it's hard to find a job that'll just take you for four months. I find a lot of shame. I've done it before and it's just, it's an awful feeling when you just get hired by a place and you work for like a month or two and then you quit. It's just... I deserve all the shame in the world. Um, but I've done it and it's awful and I didn't want to do that again. So I was thinking, what are my options? I need a job that I can just do in my free time where I can still take trips because I don't want to just sit up cooped at home for four months. That's not me, mm -mm, you know. And I was like, what about Uber or Lyft? I mean, people make money off of that. It's popping in my area, so why don't we give it a try? So I signed up for both Uber and Lyft, and today I'm gonna to be talking about my experience. But before we get started, you guys, I have recently hit 5,000. My next goal is 10,000. You know the drill, it's free for you, and really means the world to me. I check my YouTube subscribers a little more than I should, and luckily I'm very happy every time I do because the numbers just keep going and it's making me so happy so if you have a chance or if you're just feeling like a nice person please subscribe it means a lot to me also i have my socials all listed down below i'm very active on instagram and love seeing what you guys are up to over there let's get started enough chit chat so i signed up for uber and lyft uber and lyft the competitors what one's better what one did i like what happened? Well, I signed up for Uber first, and let me just say, I learned very quickly that I didn't want to work for Uber upon simply doing the vehicle registration. Nor do I ever want to ride Uber again, because I showed up to this lot, and they, where they evaluate the cars and make sure the brakes work and make sure you got some seats in your car. And literally there was a guy that just took my sheet where you're supposed to check off everything, he checked off everything, didn't even open the car, and let me go. And I was an Uber driver. And that experience just really concerned me. There's just a lot of ethical things there. But whatever, I called myself an Uber driver for a day. <laughs> and then I signed up for Lyft. When I signed up for Lyft, it was a little bit more difficult because you have to go to an approved Lyft facility. It's these pop-up places. Mine was in some random parking lot that like Lyft owned and there's this portable there and a man who just sits there all day And he actually got in the car looked around checked out everything and Took a photo picture of me to verify that that was the photo that would be on my profile Then I was able to start Lyft driving Immediately no was I able to start immediately? I think I was able to start immediately that day that night, I was like, okay, this is the night. This is the night I become a Lyft driver. And the reason I kind of wanted to do this is because I love the idea of working on your own schedule. It's just so flexible. And I had the time of my life for four months, just waking up early, doing rush hour, going to the dog park with my dog and going to the gym, showering, and then getting ready for the afternoon rush hour and then calling it a day. It was awesome and I really enjoyed it but that I'm getting ahead of myself the first day I was so nervous I turned on my app I had been practicing with the Lyft app for a couple times because they have a trial version where you can like practice and then I was driving and I got my first little notification I was so nervous and I picked up the people in the middle of the countryside which was kind of scary at night I've heard some horror stories and drove them a very far way to a concert and made a lot of money and I was like this is awesome I just made 30 bucks doing that and I enjoyed it because these people were really fun to talk to so I started doing that and I had this idea like I said I was an uber driver for a day I had this idea to have both apps on at the same time which is a very bad idea don't do that um and then like 
if I got an, a ride on Uber first, I would turn off the Lyft app and take the Uber one. And then after that, I'd turn them both on, whatever one I got first, so I'd turn off the other one. It's very hard to manage. And what I learned very quickly is that Uber doesn't pay a lot. Uh-uh. No, 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 because I work in a college town, a town, and most of the rides I got were just across town. And it wasn't worth my while for these one or two dollar rides, no, no. And that's what Uber does is at the time, I'm not sure if it's still the case, but at the time the minimum fare was very low or non-existent. I can't remember which one it was, but it was very low and just not worth my while and gas and, and taking time out of my day. So I decided to ban Uber from my life and pursue Lyft because they offered me $4 minimum. I think at the time originally it was five, but then it dropped to four, but $4 minimum per ride, which means if somebody was just going a block, you still get $4. So in my small college town, I found it very efficient to just do a bunch of quick little rides, get that coin and call it a day. I also had the ability to drive in the city as well. I could have driven in San Francisco. Like, I'm pretty close to there, and that's where a lot of Lyft drivers in this area would drive to, to work on a daily basis. However, I can't stand cities, you guys. It's just, I can't drive there. It's just too much stress for Miss Juliana here, and it's just not worth it to me. Like, I'd rather just have a nice little leisurely drive through the countryside, through the little suburbs, and, and, earn my coin that way and I know it wasn't as much but it was something. Now my tips for success with Lyft to provide an experience to talk to the client because that's always fun to just chat up a conversation it's good to be social you practice your social skills and that's awesome so I would do that I'd offer candy all the time I even made little signs in the back of my car with rules I don't know why I did that, but it made me look really professional and reminded everyone to give a five-star review. I would also offer water in the evenings when I was driving, picking up people from bars. Oh, I would always do Throwback Thursdays where I just play like 90s songs all day long and people really like that. Now let's talk about some of the more difficult sides of Lyft driving. First of all, bathroom usage. I love to drink water and it's very, very hard when you're driving all the time like, where do you go to the bathroom? Like, you have to either go to rest stops, but there weren't any in my area. So I found the best solution was to use the bathroom at Target. Probably that's looked down upon by some people because I wasn't actually shopping there. But the bathroom's always nice. People don't question why I'm there. I walk in and out, it's fine. Uh, I guess you could do that with Walmart too. I didn't like gas, gas station bathrooms. Those are just questionable. I didn't trust them and also I was always scared. Also, let's talk about some bad experiences. A lot of people watching this are probably like, Juliana, you are a woman. You are driving at night. Were you not scared? Yeah, I was scared because I had a lot of incidents. Not a lot, that sounds bad. I had a couple incidents. Nothing bad happened really, but it's just kind of like, oh, it made me think, Juliana, you better, you better watch out. One night, one of my it was like my first week of driving. I picked up a passenger. I like showed up to this day's in and she wasn't coming out. I was like, okay, what the heck? And I tried to call, no answer. I was looking at the map, like trying to see where she was. I was like, oh, whoa, she's over here in this random parking lot behind a research building at 10 p.m. I drive over there and there's all these teens or like young 20 people young 20 people, and um, there was like a bonfire in this parking lot. I'm like, this is highly illegal, but I'm just trying to do my job and make sure people get home safe. So I drove up and it was really awkward. I just was sitting there in my car, right in front of this bonfire, and everyone was staring at me like, what is this creeper doing here? Um, and this girl comes running over and she's like, on drugs or drunk or something wasn't right. But she gets in my car and her friends like push her in there like, like trying to get her out of this situation. And I drive just like one block and she starts like crying and being like, my family's gonna kill me because it's my sister's birthday and I'm so drunk. And she's saying that she got kicked out of the house and she's homeless right now and she doesn't know what to do and blah, blah. And I was like, uh oh, this is way too much baggage. I'm just getting paid $4 for this ride, um, but whatever. I'll be your therapist for the day. So I talked her through it. We stopped the car. I shouldn't have done this. We stopped the car and I was like, listen girl, like 
you know, you gotta be more responsible because people really care about you. You know, is there a place I can take you? Like maybe we should go to a friend's house or or something, or do you wanna go back to the party and be with your friends there? And she was just so indecisive. And so I dropped her off back at this bonfire because I didn't have time for that. And also it was very uncomfortable. And I was like literally giving her candy and water because I didn't know what she was gonna do. I was kind of scared. She was just acting a little bit off. So I dropped her back off and I went home immediately. And um, then the next night I tried to give it a try again and work around two, 12 to 2 when the bars when people are leaving the bars and I picked up this guy and the first thing he says when he gets in my car is man the bouncers didn't even see the knife in my shoe why would you say that why would you say that to someone let alone a female Lyft driver who is driving at night and is very frail and and can't defend herself like why would you why would you say that to me he was very drunk and Luckily, the rest of the ride was okay, and he didn't mean it, I guess. He wasn't trying to scare me. He was just thinking it was funny, but I didn't think it was funny, and it was very inappropriate. And in retrospect, I should have kicked him out. But uh, this is at the very beginning of my Lyft career, and I was too afraid to stand up for myself, which is my point. If you are driving as a female, you need to stand up for yourself. You need to come up with a game plan and figure out what your little speech is to get the person out so that you have that down and you can kick them out right away because you do not deserve to be treated like that or be scared when you're driving. It's just the worst. I had to drive him for like 20 minutes into the countryside thinking, is this it? Like, and it wasn't worth it. It was a stupid mistake on my part and I never let that fly again. And actually after that point, I didn't drive at night anymore. The best way that I found to make money while doing Lyft was to do these like bonus hour kind of things where if you hit a certain amount of rides done within a certain time frame, you would have a guaranteed rate of a certain amount of dollars. I found that to be the best way to make money in my small town and I would do that most of the time. Let's talk taxes. Because you're an independent contractor, you get paid with a 1099. Basically my tip to you is to keep all of your gas receipts, all of your expenses on like water and candy for the car, all that sort of stuff, keep track of it in somewhere like all in the same place because I lost a lot of mine and when tax season came around I wasn't able to document a lot of stuff so um, keep a hold of that it's very important also since you are getting paid um, as an independent contractor they don't take out taxes and it's like yay I get all this money for myself but also no that's not how the world works sweetie it's just not and so my tip to you is to save okay this may be a lot this may seem like a lot to people but save 30% of your paycheck for taxes. Like put it in an account that's just for taxes um, because it's better to oversave than undersave. And that way when tax season comes along, you're ready to pay. And if you have leftover money in that account, you can buy yourself a new pair of shoes. It's a win-win. Another tip I have is to join Lyft Facebook groups um, in your area. So in my area, there's a Lyft Facebook group where people post questions, they leave funny little anecdotes, they ask for advice, um, and they also had meetups where they would they would have like meetings and talk about Lyft. Or, oh my gosh, I remember once I went to the airport to try to do some pickups there, and there's this giant Lyft community in the parking lot, and they're all out and they're talking to each other. There was someone barbecuing there, handing out Red Bulls to the Lyft drivers. <laughs> It is a weird Lyft world out there, let me tell you. Let's talk overall pros. Flexible schedule, great for travelers because you can take as much vacation as you want and um, really fun way to stay social and practice your conversation skills and feel like you're making a difference on people's life if you're a nice person. Cons, creepy people. Sometimes I felt like I was putting a lot of money into gas when gas prices were going up. Um, and so, yeah, I wasn't, I was spending a lot of money. Also taxes aren't taken out, so you really have to be careful with making sure you're saving enough. Um, but overall, those are my thoughts. I don't do Lyft anymore, because now I am a remote travel agent. It's a new job, and we're gonna be talking more about that next week on how I found my remote job. So if you're interested, make sure you subscribe. All right, that's it for this video. So long, travel well, and make the world your neighborhood.